Yup, you know what time it is, man. This is, of course, your favorite channel, man, CTB. It's your chance at boxing. I'm your boy, Jay Slay. What up to him, man? What's up, everybody? Thanks for tuning in. Most definitely. You definitely tuned into what we call here, Chin Check. That's when we rock you guys' channel about some news, about some news, about some information, about some rumors. And sometimes we put some money in you guys' pocket by giving you the um, odds of a fight. With that being said, man, we want to talk about a, a old school fantasy fight, man. It was a fight that I, me, myself, as a boxing fan, was fantasizing about back probably, I want to say about, I think it was seven, eight years ago. It was a while ago. Um, back when Terrence Crawford was still at 135. Uh, there was a fight between him and Adrian Broner. Um, the link will be in the uh, description for this convo, but uh, uh, Terrence Crawford was on the Port Awake podcast a couple days ago, and he actually mentioned it. He actually said that, you know, Bron- Broner was a character back in the day, and he wasn't going to be one of those type of guys who was going to sit back and allow Broner to be that character with him. And uh, that was his super fight. That was going to be his coming out party. So I want to get my boy my opinion on the possibility that that fight would have been happening, who he would have chosen that fight, and... Would both of these guys be who they are today if that fight would have happened? Um, I'm asking the first question, or the last question I just asked. Do you think both of those guys, if they would have fought back in those days, would have been the same fighters that we know of in 2022? I believe so. I think Terrence Crawford definitely would have been the same fighter. Adrian Broner, I think it would have been better for him because I think the way he lost at 147, it took a lot out of him. I think mm. we will talk about who we think gonna win later on. I guess we talk about it more in the video. But I felt like it would have been better for his career to take a loss to Terrence Crawford because the way he, I think he would have lost would have been as devastating as it was against Madonna. So I think he would have been better in his career. But I thought Terrence Crawford would have just did what he did. I think nothing would have changed with Terrence Crawford. But let me take that back. I know what I just thought about it. It would have changed with Terrence Crawford because. I think he would have got all the accolades he got, but I think he would have been a bigger star with main with mainstream and casual boxing fans. I think that, mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying, him and Earl Spence would have been on the same level as far as their popularity, as far as what they bring to the table. That would have been in question. The only thing that would have been different was, honestly, Crawford would have been had, would have had more leverage in negotiations because he would have had more accolades than Earl Spence, and he would have been as popular as Earl Spence. Because by him beating Adrian Bone at 135, that would have made him a star at 135. Then he would have went up to 140 and became undisputed. So he would have been huge by the time he got to 147. So, yeah, I think both of their careers would have changed, but it definitely would have been big for uh, Terrence Crawford. I kind of agree with that. I'm going to play devil's advocate just a little bit on, on that. I'm going to say that while I think he would have been, he would have had a lot more negotiating power when it comes to you know, the, the Earl Spence fight now, I don't think it would have been much difference because fans now, especially if you go by, uh, if you're going by the career that still, like, they still had the same career that they had. You know what I'm saying? So Broner still had that loss to Sean Porter. He still had the loss to Manny Pacquiao. He still had the losses. He still had the loss to Mayana. So even though he would have took his loss earlier, he would have took his loss to Terrence Crawford, possibly. Um, I don't think Adrian Broner would have catapulted Terrence Crawford as much as it would, it would have, I don't, I don't think. Because I think, like you say, even though Bona had that name, it had it popular, it probably would have been a great sale. It would have been a great fight. Um, I'm pretty sure Bob Barron was in the way of that fight. Um, I think that um, that people still would have been criticizing Terrence Crawford's resume. You know what I'm saying? At, at this point in 2022, only because Bona turned out how he turned out. He turned out not to be letting his hands go. He turned out to be, you know, not... He skipped over 140, then he turned out to be pretty much washed out at 147. So I think they would have said the same thing about Gamboa, you know what I'm saying, about Adrian Broner. Only difference was they said Gamboa was smaller, but people forgot how Gamboa was undefeated, the Olympian, was called Baby Mike Tyson and all that other shit. Had a whole marketing behind him. He was with Mayweather Promotions, then he was with SMS Promotions. Gamboa was the shit until Terrence Crawford fought him. Now he ain't shit no more. So I think the same effect would have happened to Adrian Broner. But Adrian Bonner would have been a ticket seller. So like you said, he still would have sold tickets per se, because he's a character. But I think when it comes to resume, people still would have been sort of criticizing Terrence Crawford's resume at that point. But uh how do you find that how you think that fight would have turned out, man? How you how you see that fight? Give me that like, the play by play on on how you think it would have happened. Crazy it may sound, I think it would have been kind of similar to the Gamboa fight. 
I think the only thing difference was I don't think Crawford would have stopped him at 135. But I think he would have won a decision. Mm-hmm. No, he would have stopped him. Because he didn't yeah. stop Ricky Burns. I, yeah. I, I think I think Terrence Crawford got strong when he got to 140. I think 135, he would drink. And he well, he didn't have the same power he had at 140 and 147. I think he got more power at 140 and 147 he had at 135. But, I want to say this quick too. Adrian Broner tended to slept on him. People think Adrian Broner never been stopped. People, people, people think he had because people remember the highlights of him being rocked by Mayana, but forget that he got up and actually won some of those middle rounds against Mayana. But go ahead. Look, why are you talking about that? People forget when he fought Manny Pacquiao, and this I would have seen this happen one time with Manny Pacquiao. Manny Pacquiao, go back, go back and watch that fight. Fight. He they uh they traded punches, and they both got hit, but um Adrian Broner got caught clean on the chin. With a punch by uh, Man Pack, an overhand right, clean yep. on his chin. It, it, he stumbled, he went back, reset, and he was buzzed for probably five seconds. He was right back. Yep. And I never seen nobody take Manny Pack out shot like that. Even Mayweather, when he got caught, he had to, he had to, uh, you know, pin his guards up about seven, eight seconds, and he kind of shook it off. But Adrian Broner came back like that. So he got a hell of a chin. But, uh, the point I was making about the fight, I think uh, Terrence Crawford would have, uh, it would have been an interesting fight for about four or five rounds like the Game Boy fight. He would have he would have caught Crawford a couple of times, but eventually, um, Adrian Bone is too one dimensional. He, he don't have he has, he has a check uh, a, a check hook pretty much, and he got a fast one two, and that's all you gonna get out of Adrian Bone. He's not gonna gonna give you much, and, and Crawford got too many dimensions to his game. Once they went to the sixth and seventh round, and Terrence Crawford got to his his playing B and C, uh, he would have been confused. They've been similar to Zab Judah. Zab, the three, two or three rounds he caught Mayweather, but once Mayweather went to playing B or C, Zab Judah didn't know what to do. He started doing this stuff with his with his uh, hands because he, he he was confused. He went with the low blows because he didn't have a, a plan B or C or D. Same thing with Adrian Broner. So I thought he would have won a decision nine to three, ten to two. But it would have been an interesting fight for the first four or five rounds, but Terrence Crawford would have pulled away and won an easy decision. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I agree. I think, like I said, I thought, I was thinking that maybe he would have stopped Adrian Broner, but like you said, at 135, Crawford wasn't really known as a devastating puncher he is now at 147. And on top of that, like I said, Broner Chen was, was granted, at one, especially at those weeks, at 135 and, and, yeah. and he walked through people. Uh, Broner, yeah, Broner was walking through people. Would he, would have, I haven't played devil's advocate a little bit again, now I'm playing devil's advocate again. <laughs> would he be able to walk through Terrence Crawford that same way he was walking through the Gavin Reese's of the world and all that? That's that would that would be the part I would like to see. Cause I want to see he was a trial. He was a try. I would like to see what what would Terrence Crawford have done to you know counteract that. Cause even though Broner don't let his hands go often, it, he he does have. I give him B B plus defense. Broner has decent defense. He just get overwhelmed with punches because he don't let his hands go enough. To keep people from punching at him, that's usually his, that's usually how he loses. That's especially how he lost to Manny Pacquiao and uh, Sean Porter. It wasn't because uh, he was getting hit a lot by Sean Porter. It was more so he kept his hands in his pockets. The same way he had his uh, his tough fight, his last fight out with the um, the unknown guy, whatever the guy's name, the Santana looking guy, um, Santiago. Santiago, yeah. The same reason with him. It wasn't so much that Santiago was beating him up and was, you know, he was getting hit a lot. It was more so because he wasn't letting his hands go. Broner at 135 wasn't that wasn't that guy. He was letting his hands go and he was actually bullying people. He was actually throwing fast combinations. Like you said, it was mostly check hooks, straight and straight rights and um uppercuts, but he was throwing them shits. And he was he was counter people with them shits. So I would it, it been a great fight, man. I'm not gonna lie. I kinda feel we got robbed. That's another fight that we gotta attribute, you know, the whole political bullshit that we did with, with top ranking um with top ranking uh back then it was um Golden Boy. It was a Golden Boy back then too. It wasn't no PBC back then. So it was Golden Boy versus uh, Top Rank. This is the reason why we didn't get, it, didn't get that fight. Um, but that's another reason why, man. That's a fight that I think we as Boston fans got robbed of. Because that fight would have been spectacular, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, but, if, but I think what we a lot of people don't know either is Terrence Crawford really wasn't known at that time either. So was he even on the radar of Adrian Broner? Do you think he was on the radar of Adrian Broner since Adrian Broner had all the, all the juice at that time? I think he was because I believe that boxers know... Who, who, who the shit before we know who the shit is. So even though Terrence Crawford, he, like he said, he always said, I got it out the mud. Which he kind of did. He didn't get, you know, he, he kind of uh, got kicked out of the Olympics. 
trial. He left because he got into, you know, altercation, whatever. So a lot of people were sleeping on him. But, you know, these, these fighters grow up together. These guys grow up from, you know, eight, nine, up to 16, 17 year olds fighting, you know, in golden gloves and in uh, Olympic trials and, and things of that uh, kind. So I'm pretty sure Adrian Broner heard the name and knew who he was. So to me, if I'm gonna be honest, he probably would have took that fight because it would have been high, it would have been high risk, low reward. Because to everybody else, he said, "Man, I beat Terence Crawford." It's like, okay, who the fuck is Terence Crawford at the time? But he knew Terence Crawford was gonna be the real deal at some point in his career. So yeah, I think he knew who he was. But to us, like you said, I didn't really. Really recognize Terrence Crawford, the Gamble, Ricky Burns, around that, around that state. And even then, I was still kind of skeptical of what he could do at the bigger weight classes. But now we know he he the real deal. Yeah, same. I think a lot of fans would have, would have criticized him. Because you got people who was actually criticizing Broner, too. They, was, they thought that he... But he had the opposite effect. They thought he was a weight bully. They was calling him the weight bully and saying that he only beat up smaller guys. Was wound up being the case, so they kind of had the opposite. It was like opposite ends of the spectrum almost. Brona was known as the weight bully, but Terence Crawford was the guy who couldn't go up. You know, what I'm saying he couldn't go up to 147. Because that's the me and you. We had this debate back. You know, what I'm saying while we started the channel when we first started talking boxing to each other. You also you yourself told me that you thought Terence Crawford was too small for uh for 147, and we see who was right in that uh in that debate right there, <laughs> right there. But uh, somewhat, not not quite. I said I said. He was too small for the division, and that's the reason why he would lose to Errol Spence. I'm still, I'm still sticking by that. I'm still sticking by yeah. that point. But we'll find out hopefully soon. Hopefully. You talking about the, talking about the guy that got a hundred percent knockout ratio at 147? Yeah, uh-huh. I'm still saying he's too small. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, man. You got anything to add to this topic, man? It was a great show, man. I appreciate. it. Sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think we covered it all, though. All right, man. I'm pretty sure we're gonna have more more fantasy matchups that we've missed out on that people forgot about. Cause it's, like I said, between that, that cold war they had between Golden Boy and Top Rank and HBO and Showtime, it was a whole lot of... We should do a segment about that, man. That'd be a good segment. All the fights, the underrated fights that we missed out because of that cold war. That's a good that's a good segment right there. All right, with that being said, man, this is your favorite channel, man, CTB. This is Chantel Boxing. I'm your boy, Jay Slay. Say peace to him, man. All right, everybody. Please, please. Hit the sub, uh, sub button for us to get our subs up, man. We're trying to get to that 1,000, man. Comment, like, uh, uh, notification bell so you'll know when we drop a video. You know why? Because we love Boston and you love Boston. But most of all, God, peace and love, and we out of here. Take care.